Let the attack of the awesome begin. Brad Jones. Popular. Young. Handsome. With a sexy, deep voice. A man with the brightest of futures. A man with the darkest of pasts. From Weasel's Rip My Flesh to Superman the 1975 musical, his reviews of exploitation films and the world's craziest pornography is viewed by his adoring fans from all over the world. Brad Jones, master of reviews to divide man from porn and porn from man. The Cinema Snob. The first question for you, Mr. Brad Jones. Uh, do you agree that you have the coolest voice on the planet? And have you ever thought of doing voiceovers for movie trailers? I thought I had the coolest voice. Then I heard that Ted Williams guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. He's getting all my work. There <laughs> <laughs> uh, we go. Who to take out? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get a kid, man. Uh. Uh, All right. Which horror film should have a remake, and which horror film should not have a remake? Which horror film should not have a remake? Um, I, I <laughs> my favorite horror movie of all time is Dawn of the Dead, but they already messed that up and making a remake. Um, what are some of my other favorites? I know they're remaking Toxic Avenger, which is another one of my favorite movies, and. They're planning on remaking that, and with a with like a PG thirteen. <laughs> I don't know seen the Toxic Adventure, but there's there's a scene where a a helmet child gets his head run over with a car. There's a scene where a guy gets his face crushed with a weight machine with a weightlift machine. <laughs> yeah, that's a film for the tweens. <laughs> basically, like, well, basically, it sounds like what they're doing is just making the movie version off of the Toxic Crusaders, the cartoon series. So like just call just just call it the Toxic Crusaders. <laughs> that way. But movies that should get remade. Um, I I used to say uh, I used to say I would have been happy with a with a remake of Last House on the Left. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it could do something to take out all the bumbling the bumbling cop shenanigans. <laughs> uh, but that 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 did get remade. I actually really like the remake. Um, so I would have said that. Now now I'm, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> I heard they were actually going to make like a prequel to John Carpenter's The Thing or something like that. They? they are. It sounds horrible. Uh, <laughs> and it's probably going to be made in CGI instead of like... Of course it is. Of course oh, it's- yeah. And in 3D. In 3D. Yeah. <laughs> CGI, 3D, whatever. I mean, uh, I, it, it's, it's, about, it's supposed to be about that Swedish team from the beginning of the movie, from the beginning of the thing, but I guess in this prequel, well, they're American. I I don't know. Um, I'm just going by I'm just going by what I've read, but I'm I'm so not looking forward to it. Yeah. All right. Most of the stuff that churn out we're never looking forward to. Yeah, I, I I usually tend to still go in like with an open mind on stuff. You know what I mean? Because yeah. sometimes you know, hey, maybe it'll turn out to be all right. I like the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, so. Mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting to like that, so sometimes I I still try to go in with a somewhat open mind, even though that can that can <laughs> just bite me in the ass, and I'll still have a terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next question is: uh, Do you ever go on the your your video reviews section of the that guy with the glasses forums? Yeah. Um, yeah, I do. I go on there to answer the uh, the ask that Brad or yeah, ask that Brad. Um, <laughs> ask, uh, ask the snob or that that uh, that section on the forum. So yeah, I, I do go on there and I do read through all of the uh, entries. I I, I I work on the site about every day, so sometimes when I answer stuff on there, it it can be pretty far few in between. But I I do try to get I do get on there about every few weeks to answer those uh, questions. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay. <laughs> what would you be doing for a living if you weren't the cinema snob? <laughs> I'd be dead. <laughs> 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 um, I let's see. What was I doing before I was? Uh, before this turned pretty 
turned pretty lucrative. Uh, I was working at Comcast. Um, I was working at Comcast. Uh, I, I so would not be doing that again. I can tell you that. I hated that. The last thing you want to do is put me in a job where I have to, t- where I have to talk on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a lady who could, I was the guy who had to call, had to call people who hadn't returned their equipment. And so I remember there was a lady one time who was yelling at me and I said to her, uh, uh, Sorry, ma'am, but I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm going to have to let you go because this company forbids us to do business with children. (laughs) 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 So I'm not I'm not the customer service type. (laughs) Me neither. (laughs) (laughs) Most of them are freaking idiots. You just want to strangle them anyway. So what's the point? (laughs) Yeah, I'm not. I'm not the customer service type. If someone's a dick, then I'm gonna be an asshole. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I, I would, uh, um, I would probably still just be working a lot of odd jobs and and still doing my my exploitation movies. Yeah. But aren't you glad you aren't? <laughs> I do miss the video store. I worked at the video store for a little while. I do miss that. Um, yeah, I, I, I've even toyed with the idea of even going back and working for one for maybe like a couple of days out of the week or something like that but I'm so busy <laughs> <laughs> oh dear um, now our next question if the channel awesome year 3 anniversary could be held anywhere of your choice where would it be <laughs> oh man uh, I'm, I'm just happy with <laughs> Chicago you know at least if, it, if it's anywhere where I don't have to get on an airplane plane i'm cool yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if i can just hop the train or something hey that's fine with me i i hate airplanes i hate getting on plane so yeah i, I will be very picky as long as i don't have to fly <laughs> i was on an airplane for the first time since i was maybe five when i was going down to st martin yeah i was excited to be going on the plane and then you finally get on it and you're like oh god <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I get most sickness from all that tur- turbulence. I uh, hate it. I hate it so just, much. Man was not made to be that high up in the sky. No, I just have a thing. Every time I'm on a plane now, I do the the thing from Final Destination where you check the tree on the uh-huh. seat in front of you, working, and they're not playing Stuart Little on the in-flight movies. Then they're like, right, I'm not gonna die today. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Oh. <laughs> oh, then you know you're okay. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next question is, uh, who would you collaborate from Back Out of the Glasses in a, re- in a review that you haven't collaborated already with? Um, Obscurus Lupa. I'm a big fan of stuff. Yeah. We like uh, the same type of movies. <laughs> so that would be a lot of fun. Do we? I've I've cameo I've cameoed in her stuff before, um, but as for like a full on collaboration, uh, yeah, I would I would love to do to do one with her. Also, uh, uh, same with the uh, Spoonie as well. That would be a lot of fun. <clears throat> yeah. God, the maps would ensue. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I think I was introduced to you uh, from Spoonie. I think he posted that video uh, talking about you. and then uh, P- P- yeah. P- yeah. yeah. Yeah, I really owe a, a pretty much. I pretty much owe, owe about my entire career to him. <laughs> yeah. God bless you, Spoonie. <laughs> and you, of course, Brad. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Even though Spoonie did badmouth Sonic Four, I still love him. <laughs> Sonic Four, I, I, uh, Sonic Four drove. They released that in chunks, right? In just parts or something? That, yeah. That's freaking infuriating. Why the hell would you do that? Uh, <laughs> like, How many like they're releasing there? Sonic 4 in parts? Well, okay, so I played the first part of it, and then I'm like, I gotta wait to play the rest of You know what? I don't care. God damn, just release the pulp. <laughs> they, they, they do the same for everything, like, like the like the Homestar Runner games. Like, it's yeah. episodic, or I think, oh, what, what was it? Uh, Back to the Future is episodic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like, okay. Can you imagine if they did that with the games we grew up on, like, back in the 80s? Can you imagine if they did that with, like, 
Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Although, although that one, I, I would probably, I would probably keep playing because I'd be like, "Whoa, what? I'm dodging like bird shit now." Oh, I, I got to put the hell in the next part. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> is, is there going to be another fight between Kung Tai Ted and the Snob? Maybe. Um, I haven't written anything for that yet, but maybe that that would be kind of that would be. That would be fun. I mean, I, I've toyed with the idea of doing a, a Ted-style uh, movie that would be done like um, like a Godfrey Ho kind of thing, where it would be one plot that had nothing to do with anything else, and then, like, Ted stuff spliced into it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I've kind of toyed with that idea. That would be kind of funny, in, in which case I would... Uh, I would actually, if, if I ever did that, which would be pr- probably pretty far in the future, um, uh, uh, I would I would certainly bring back other characters that Ted has fought, so like Master Kempo Dojo and the s- Snob, uh, um, <laughs> and uh, uh, e- even the characters that have been killed off. <laughs> <laughs> Solomon! <laughs> so- Fredericks. <laughs> oh god, that'd be brilliant to see. <laughs> <laughs> like Kung Tai Ted is my favorite character. O- over the snob now, I love Kung Tai Ted. It's fun. It's a fun character. It's, it's a fun character to do, and it's it's uh it's an easy character to to do as well. Like I I have like uh, in writing that and everything, you know, I I it's basically a riff. You know, it's it's a riff off of one or two scenes from a given movie. So I only have to watch that particular scene. <laughs> so it's. <laughs> It's an easy. It's an easier show to do since I don't have to watch a whole movie. Yeah. And there, is there any other type of film that you'd be reviewing if you weren't into exploitation films? Any other type? Um, probably stuff that I, I. I've always had toyed with the idea of doing more scripted reviews just as myself on, say, like some of my favorite movies. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would probably do something like that, you know, some, some of my favorite movies, like, uh, you know, uh, crap, I talk about so many bad movies, what the hell are my favorite movies? <laughs> <laughs> and you forget, you forget them after all, you think, I hate this, I hate this, what do I actually like? <laughs> yeah, stuff like Blue Velvet, Toxic Avenger, you know, The Great Race, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like all, all all old school action or ho- horror movies at all? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like uh, you know, my favorite horror movies: the original Dawn of the Dead, and you know, uh, other uh, like m- movies like Cruising with Al Pacino. That's one of my favorites. Vice Squad, you know. Yeah. So we wouldn't see the snob uh, reviewing musicals, would we? Anytime soon. <laughs> Actually, uh, my next episode is. Uh, <laughs> It's funny you say that. <laughs> My next episode is, uh, which I got to watch this movie later today. Uh, Alice in Wonderland, the uh, musical porno. Oh, no. oh my oh, god! god. <laughs> is that a show? To? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. I feel so sorry for you. <laughs> it's actually not that bad. I've seen it before. It's actually really not that bad of a movie. It's one of the few Alice in Wonderland variations that I actually like. Um, really? <laughs> it's it's really not it's surprisingly really not that bad of a movie, but um I got a, a request for it. Uh Juario's birthday is coming up. Uh, oh. I was talking to him a couple of months ago and he he said uh, as a, he asked me if it's like a, a birthday present to him if I could do uh Alice in Wonderland the uh musical porno and I was like, Yeah, I, I have a copy of it. Totally, man. <laughs> That, that, that would be a fun one to do, <laughs> which that makes the third musical, I think, that I've yeah, done, yeah. between Nudist Colony of the Dead and... And Superman. The Superman one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh. Superman, the Superman musical. Yeah. That's my favorite one. <laughs> I, I hear the Spider-Man musical is, like, doing horrible. No, it's actually doing well. Yeah. I, is it? Yeah. It's, I, I, it's, I hear people saying the music sucks, they're having a whole bunch of trouble with the stunts, and... Uh, no, no, they're like, oh, yeah... 
It's supposed to be terrible, don't get me wrong. The show is supposed to be really, really bad. But because of that and because of all of the injuries and all this publicity it's been getting, it's been selling out. Every sh- every preview that it's had, it's selling out. It's well, making <laughs> money. It, it's making oh money God. because of how notorious it is. Oh, it's, I'm, I'm a big musical theater nut, but it's, I, I just can't get the concept of going to see Spider-Man singing and dancing on the stage. I just <laughs> can't get the idea into my head. Yeah. Well, there is one, uh, there's one independent theater company or something that's doing their own Spider-Man musical that's making it more like the comics, whereas this Julie Taymor one isn't really, it, it just kind of makes up stuff, but, uh, so they're trying to put on a good Spider-Man musical, and I'm sitting there like, oh, I don't know, I I kind of really want to see the bad one. <laughs> 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 I'm more interested in seeing the one that's supposed to suck. <laughs> uh. Oh, well. Alright, the next question is... If you could embody another That Guy With The Glasses contributor for a day, who would it be and what would you review? Oh. <laughs> I have no idea. I can, <laughs> I can embody Spoody and give a negative review to Scott Pilgrim just to piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was wrong with Scott Pilgrim? I, 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 I think I don't, I'm not sure if I saw the review or not. Me? Oh, I just didn't like it. Um, Scott Pilgrim, I it, I gave a review for it, and I basically said, uh, it's not that I think that this is a bad movie. This movie's just not for me. You know, it it appeals to a style of video game that I don't like, or that I don't play all that often, which is the fighting game. Um, it, uh, as far as martial arts goes, it's very wire foo, which I, and CGI oriented, which I don't like. So, and also it's a very hipster kind of flick, and I'm really not a hipster. <laughs> um, and plus, I, it's, it's a love story about a guy who falls in love with a block of wood. That's basically it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I saw the movie. I, I, I made the mistake of not reading the books before going to see the movie, because when I saw all these crazy effects on the screen and, Scott and all these and all the uh, Ramona's boyfriend popping out of nowhere. I'm thinking, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I go see this thing and he's fighting her. He's like, you must fight my league of evil exes. And I'm in the audience like, why? <laughs> she's she's not worth it, man. And plus, come on, restraining order, dude. Come on. <laughs> I, uh, and and I know like oh you know it's supposed to be like a video game yeah well, well if it was like a video game it'd be a video game that I wouldn't like so <laughs> didn't stop Armand White that bastard from making from calling it the best movie of 2010 <laughs> hey, I mean, if it, if it appeals to you then that's then that's fine you know like but in my case like it, it was a situation it, it's less that I think it's a bad movie I don't think it's a bad movie I don't it's just it's not for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Alrighty. But if it is, but if it is for you, if it is your cup of tea, if it is your style of movie, then then I can totally see why you think it's one of the best movies of the year. <laughs> yeah. Do you think the cinema stop and the nostalgia critic would ever have an epic battle like you did with the angry video game nerd? And if so, <laughs> who do you think would win? That's. I, you know what? Probably, probably the nostalgia critic because he's got his gun is supposed to be real and mine is a uh, BB gun. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> but you kind of, sort of did win in Kickassia, didn't you? When you had that, when you had um, the epic battle against him at the end. Well, yeah, but I had like it was it I was one of like what fifteen people against one person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking one on one, yeah, Doug would probably shoot me square in the head. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, now, Brad, do you think there will be a sequel to Kikassia Maids? Just while we're on the subject of that, and what storyline would you want to see? Storyline for a sequel to Kikassia. Um, oh man, I don't know. Um. Jeez, what what would I want to see? 
Uh, uh, better acting? <laughs> oh. Oh. Hey, I, it's deliciously over the top. Um, but uh, uh, I don't know, it'd be funny if for some reason it was post-apocalyptic. I talked to Laura about their year anniversary um, uh, a while ago, and I told them I think a good idea would be um, maybe if the that guy with the glasses contributors were all like turned into these zombies, and everyone had to figure out a way to get them back before they engulfed the earth. I'd like to see a yeah yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see a, a a slasher movie would be funny. Oh god, <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> just do a straight up horror film. <laughs> like not even like not even a comedy, just a straight up freaking horror slasher film. <laughs> <laughs> Just random slashing. <laughs> that would be that would be kind of fun. <laughs> Who would live? Who would die? Also, for prime time, bitch. <laughs> 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 oh boy. Anywho. Anyway. <laughs> Get along to the questions. The next one is: Which of your shows is your personal favorite to make? My favorite to make. Uh, I let's see. Uh, I like making the Bruno Matai show. That's that's a fun one because we just sit there and watch the movie and then have some drinks and talk about it. That one's that one that one I enjoy doing. Um, <clears throat> um yeah, that one's pro- probably uh, my favorite one to make. As for like which which one on there is my favorite show, um, I like I like Brad and Jared a lot. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm pretty partial. <laughs> I'm pretty partial to that show. <laughs> uh, okay, so I <laughs> so we're just waiting for the tumbleweeds to go by there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brief moment of dead silence. <laughs> <laughs> is there any? Is there anything you refuse to try for? For Brad tries. What's been your favorite episode of this show to make? Oh man. Um, favorite episode to make. Uh, doing the state fair one was kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, anything that I'd re- use to try? No, not really. I mean, well, I I probably wouldn't do that source hot sauce because it would <laughs> probably kill me. Um, yeah. <laughs> I I don't think I'll end up doing that. Uh, but uh, um, yeah, uh, as for I, that that show is not. If if you were to ask me which show of mine is probably my least favorite, it's probably that one. Don't <laughs> <laughs> there. Poison yourself with that with that stuff. So, well, I actually, I mean, trying the drinks and stuff like that is fun. I mean, it certainly is like getting all these weird, getting all these weird drinks and trying them out. It is fun. I, I will say that, but the show is what it is. It's a filler show. It's a filler show that I do when I'm in the middle of writing something else. So I, it's a show that I don't really think about all that often, um, as I take a drink of something right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I, it, it is fun to do, it, 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 especially in, in tasting all these uh, discontinued drinks and, and everything. Uh, but there, there would be nothing. There, I don't think there'd be anything that I'd flat out refuse to try out. Surprised you didn't with the insects. <laughs> I would have just gone, no, thanks, take it away, next. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I knew that would probably get a lot of hits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, was, I, I remember watching an old episode of Figure It Out, remember from Nickelodeon? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and they had uh, this, this uh, one episode where this girl actually makes chocolate chip cricket cookies. His chocolate chip has eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you can see me. Ah! Oh my God! It's <laughs> off and away. <laughs> uh. Now there's a storyline for Kikassia too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cricket cookies that take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Now, uh, are there any of the movies that you've you've reviewed, Brad, that you wish you'd never laid eyes on? <laughs> um, I have to think. 
Uh, you know, it, as long as the video turns out well, I consider it to be worth it, you know? Um, yeah. Like, there are some that are, that are nearly impossible to sit through, like Chatterbox, Las Vegas Bloodbath, the Superman musical, some that just, oh, God, you feel like you need to wear a special helmet when you're watching it. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, so, but, you know, as long as the video turns out funny and... I get enough material and jokes out of it, I consider it to be worth it, you know. Um, yes. I think about the hardest one that I wrote for was The Stewardess's 3D, um, which well, that's, well, going, that's going back a couple of years. Uh, that, huh, that movie, it was basically just, at least the version I saw, I understand that there's different versions of the movie out there. The one that I saw, I think, was some weird, rare version of the movie. Uh, because it was basically just a, a, a stag reel of just different softcore sex scenes that there was some kind of plot there going on, but I couldn't tell what it was. It was very jumbled and confusing, and it was very hard to get jokes out of. Um, it was kind of hard to get jokes out of the uh, uh, the Ninja Turtles porno. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not just that it was actually 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 let me be more, but not that it was hard, but it was. <laughs> the movie as a whole was 50 minutes long, and about a half an hour of it was porn. So really, I'm just watching about 20 minutes worth of footage and pulling jokes off of that, which which I guess I did get a lot of jokes out of, but because I'm watching such a small amount of footage, that review was only eight minutes long. <laughs> yeah. Man, I've had an episode that short in like three years. <laughs> I even got some comments from a couple of people who were upset, like, oh, man, you weren't even trying with this one. Like, I'm like, no, I really did. I, I, could, I was just only watching about 20 minutes worth of footage. I couldn't shirt a 16-minute review out of that. No. <laughs> then, then you'd just be riffing. <laughs> yep, standard. Yeah, yeah, it's it's long, true. Like, a, like a review should actually be, like, I know some people have reviews that are only 8 minutes long and some are 20 minutes long. Which do you think would be better, having reviews that are sh that are short and e and quick to watch, or or w ones that are uh, long and uh, more into detail? I think it all depends. I think if you're going to do a straight up review for it, which I I don't consider the snob to be a straight up review. I, it it really is video riffing. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's just a condensed riff on certain segments of the movie and nitpicking stuff here and there. I don't consider that to be I don't consider the cinema snob to really be a review. So if it's if it's uh if it's that, if it's just you're 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 doing it very linear as the movie is going on, if you're doing it in that kind of style and making jokes here and there about consecutive scenes in the movie, then it, it helps for it to be about 16 minutes long or more, so that way you get more material in there, that way you talk about more of the footage. If you're doing a straight-up review, which most likely would not be a linear review, you would be talking about different scenes here and there throughout it, um, that certainly helps to be about six or six minutes long, six, seven, eight minutes long, you know. Um, <laughs> otherwise, it can probably get kind of tedious. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, I don't... All right, the next question. Let's see. I love the episodes when, where you're collaborating with other that guy with the glasses contributors such as Film Brain. Do you think, yeah. the, do you think the snob would ever collaborate with any other character from that guy with the glasses for a review such as Chester A. Bum or Dr. Insano? <laughs> that would be fun. Yeah, I cert if, if uh, oh yeah, if, if proposition for it, I certainly wouldn't turn it down. <laughs> <Really? Stop. laughs> I'd just love to see the one with the snow and the bum. You'd kill him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He'd just be saying it was fantastic, and just like shut up. <laughs> right. This is the greatest movie I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, it's not, dude. Shut up. This is the greatest porn I've ever seen in my life. Porners. Anyway, really, really, Bob, the anal dwarf is the worst porn you've ever seen. In, is the best porn you've ever seen in your life? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Think about that statement. <laughs> Uh, uh. <laughs> Any 
plans for more clashes between you and Phalus? Yeah, uh, um, we are, we're uh, talking about doing another uh, uh, collaboration coming up. I, I don't know on what yet, but, but uh, both he and I love working together on stuff. Uh, it's it's always a lot of fun working with him. Um so so yeah, there'll be there'll be they, there should be something coming up uh, be, between the both of us. I just don't know what yet. <laughs> um but uh, that that should be a lot of fun. Da da da. da. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Well, okay. Um now if you were to direct your own movie for the big screen, Brad, what would you do to make it stand out from some of the other lame brained movies of today? Um, I would, I mean, I've done five movies so far, um, so I would just keep doing what I've been doing, I guess, in regards to the movies I make, uh, you know, I, I try to make a movie that, that I at least want to see, <laughs> whether it's Hooker with a Heart of Gold or Game Boys or Midnight Heat, whether it's one of those, I, I try to make something that fans of that kind of movie would like to see and I uh, I like doing stuff if it's something like Midnight Heat which is an 80's cop movie I try to make it I try to make it to where it's uh, something that seems like it at least could have been written in that era you know obviously with the way it looks how it's shot you could tell it wasn't made in the 80's but uh, um at least in its writing, I try to make it authentic, you know. I try to make the script of it seem authentic and not extremely tongue-in-cheek, like, oh, this is, this is aware of the fact that it wasn't made in the 80s. Um, you know, I try not to go that route. So, you know, I, I would just keep doing stuff like that. <laughs> Sweet. Awesome. <laughs> All right. The next question is from Susie. And uh, she said she's a, a huge music and theater fan, as she told you before. And she's not a huge, she, but she's not a huge fan of horror movies. But yeah. she recently introduced. She was wait. She was re recently introduced <laughs> to the Evil Dead musical that came out in 2004, and she was surprised I... to find out she actually liked it. Kind of liked uh -huh. it. What other yeah. movies from the horror franchise or even exploitation movies do you think would make a kick-ass musical? <laughs> and you know what? Toxic would probably make a pretty good musical. <laughs> <laughs> I could, I could sort of see that actually. That, that, I think that I think that could actually be a lot of fun. Um, I haven't seen the Evil Dead musical. I actually have a copy of it. Um, I found a bootleg of it. It's con that I went to and and, and picked it up. I I haven't watched it yet, so I'll have to I'll have to give that a shot. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really interesting because the, the movie I wouldn't touch with a barge pole but <laughs> was, uh, seeing the clips of the musical on YouTube it is, it is really kind of funny and the music's really it sounds like something from Little Shop of Horrors which I love and yeah. it's, it's, it's just so really funny and people getting their arms and heads chopped off everywhere and it's, <laughs> it's like why do I like this? <laughs> yeah, really yeah. <laughs> there's, a, uh, there's a Debbie Does Dallas musical <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, you can actually see performances of it on uh, YouTube. <laughs> oh, God. The, the one, when I was thinking of that question, Brad, I thought, what if they made a Caligula musical? Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> that would uh, That would play musical itself, doesn't it? Caligula. Yeah. Caligula exclamation point. Um, <laughs> yeah, I could, I could see that. that, that would, I think that would be, that would, that'd be pretty spiffy. I'd, I'd kind of dig that. <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> I think it'd be uh, funny if they made um, maybe a musical to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre or Hell or something. Like if, if it was a musical off of like maybe like Chainsaw Massacre two, I could see that working. <laughs> one of the uh, one of the campier Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. Uh, <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They took my baby away from me. <laughs> what would you say if you discovered that there was another talking vagina porn movie? 
I wouldn't be surprised because I've already found two other ones. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> There's there's uh, Pussy Talk 2. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> there's one, uh, so, that, yeah, that'll be coming up soon. Uh, and there's one that's called Angel Above, Devil Below. Um, <laughs> I think, like, her vagina gets possessed by Satan or something like that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, oh, so man. I would, I would not be surprised if, if more people came up to me and said, "Dude, we found another one." I'm like at this point, they, nothing would surprise me. <laughs> I'd be getting out a chart and keeping track of them. Yeah. <laughs> like, We're up to twelve boys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh dear. Um, now, Brett, I just have to say this: I am dying to see Paranoia because the trailers just got me hooked. When oh, is it coming out? <laughs> it's coming out. Basically, Ryan, who directed who directed the movie, has had to do most of the post production stuff himself. Oh. Um, so uh, that's why oh. it's been in post production for a while. But he's, I talked to him the other day, and he's looking at a uh, a mid May release date for it Yay. because we just did the uh, the uh, uh, voiceover work on it for a cup for a couple of lines that had to be dubbed over. We just did we did the work on that like last week, um, and he is uh, he's he's working with Skitch, uh, getting the, uh, the the soundtrack together, and uh, he's also got to do like post. Riot also has to do like po- the post uh, effects work and stuff like that. So he's he's working round the clock on it. It, it, it it's looking like it'll be probably like a mid May uh, release. So <laughs> hopefully sometime soon. <laughs> Kind of weird. All right. Next question is <laughs> awkward <laughs> silence again. Padding. <laughs> padding. 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 Uh, hey, Amanda Haggins online. Another fellow uh, Z movie. I think she and Brad would make a cute couple. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Okay, moving on to the question. This not goes dating. <laughs> no, Brad gets a hall pass. <laughs> oh my god. I saw the trailer for that movie and I'm sitting there like, oh really? I thought a hall pass existed before. It's called a separation. <laughs> <laughs> One week of marriage. What the heck? It's the most acne shit I've ever heard of in my life. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I really enjoy your Brad Try series. Thank I, you. And actually, I made my own trying series my, myself, so... Cool. Yeah, I actually uh, went to Hot Topic, and they had energy drinks, so I bought a couple, and I made the pilot episode. <clears throat> Which energy drinks did you get? Oh, that's what I was going to say next. Uh, there was uh, a Mario power-up energy drink. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember now. There was there was a Duff. Does it make the wee noise? It, does it make the wee Mario dying noise when you finish it? Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Only if the drink kills you. There was a... There was a Simpsons Duff energy drink. No. Uh, just trying to remember off the top of my head. Uh, there was one called the Mustache Elixir. Nice. <laughs> and, and and made with real hair. <laughs> no, it was like oh, I drink this to make my mustache grow longer and fancier. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> and the last one was wasn't wasn't even an energy drink, but it's like a like a dietary supplement like. It was called uh, Bob Marley's Mellow Drink or something. I was like, okay, I'll be chilling like Bob Marley. I'll be jumping. <laughs> I'm jumping. Yeah, they didn't have much at Hot Topic. I was like, okay, I'll just try these and see what happens. Yeah. It wasn't spectacular. It wasn't horrible. It was all good. Yeah, I mean it's it, those those kind of th- those drinks that you run into like that, whether it's like the Sonic one or the Mario one, or uh, the uh, uh, the Ghostbusters one. The, you run into the problem of them basically being just 
energy drinks. Just yeah, just standard up, energy yeah, drinks. Yeah, just straight up energy drinks. I was like, okay, what was the point of marketing that? It's just the plain name energy drink. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of the originality is just simply put into the can or yeah. the name. Like when it comes to the actual drink, a lot of them can be are just about as basic as you can get. You know, that's why that's why like I, it can be at least be a little bit complimentary towards say like the Steven Seagal energy drink because you know it, it yeah it didn't taste very good, but at least it was different. Yeah. I mean, you know, at least it tasted it tasted different. They tried doing something fairly original with it. I mean, it wasn't very good, but they at least tried. Mm -hmm. The, what, what was that one, Mike, that you, you told me and Chris about? On the, uh, it was a podcast oh, episode you did a few oh, weeks ago. Oh, yes. Uh, we do a weird news segment on the podcast, and I found a couple of articles. And in California, they're making uh, a pot soda made out of marijuana. There you go. And they <laughs> and let me see if I remember the flavors off the top of my head. They had one called Dr. Pot. Uh, uh, was it a <laughs> sour diesel, grape ape, and uh, yeah, I was like, okay, let's get high off soda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, what, what was that? What was that other one? It was from Australia or something? Yeah, there there was when, another there was another one in New Zealand. They there was like a World Foods Festival in New Zealand, and they were giving out shots of uh, stallion semen. Oh yeah. <laughs> and and they're 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 Enough talking. said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's have some semen. <laughs> <It's> sold. <laughs> Go to New Zealand. <laughs> right. Make your right. coat nice and shiny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but one of my favorite episodes of Brad Tries was Crystal from Pepsi. It, it oh, the, the crystal from Pepsi? Yeah. Oh, right on. So, I have two questions. First, there's... Alright, this is an obvious, uh, obvious dumb question. Is there a diet version of Crystal Pepsi that you have or would try in a future episode? Uh, uh, the first Crystal Pepsi episode I did, the one that was just Brad tries Crystal Pepsi, was a, was a diet Crystal Pepsi. Uh -huh. uh, and it tastes... Diet does not – it doesn't hold up very well. Um, basically, you get a diet drink that's that old. It's going to taste like uh, – it's going to taste like seltzer water or something, you know. Uh, it's not going to – it's just not going to taste well. Um, but uh, you get the regular Crystal Pepsi, which is what I did, and the Brad, uh, tr Brad retries Crystal Pepsi. That holds up all right. It's flat, but, I mean – it tastes, still tastes all right. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I've, I've already, I already did do the uh, the diet crystal Pepsi, and it was, uh, it wasn't very good. <laughs> all right. Secondly, in Mexico, they released Pepsi Clear in 2005. Have you tried that particular soda yet? Pepsi Clear, I found. I actually, I, I saw an auction up on a Mexican eBay site once, and. It got to be a little too expensive. Uh, from what I understand, it's basically just like a Sierra Mist or Crystal from Pepsi. Um, it's not a clear cola. It's not like the original Crystal Pepsi. So, uh, you know, I, I if I ever happen upon it on eBay or something and I can get it for a decent price, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely try it. But I, I basically know what it what it is. It's just a, a citrus drink. What is the worst uh, soda you've ever tried? The Brussels sprout soda. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, that was the worst thing that I've done on Brad tries. Was the Brussels sprout soda? It tasted like carbonated butter, <laughs> melted carbonated butter. It was disgusting. It was it was the closest I've come to freaking hurling on an episode of that show. Oh my god, that was foul. I I hated it. <laughs> okay. Was there something you wanted to feature on Bread Tries, but you didn't because of its taste or stench? 
No, not really. As long as like if it's something that I want to do and I can get my hands on it, you know, I'll I'll do it. You know, like like you know, I I, ha I did that episode on the durian, and it didn't stink because I mean I got it frozen and apparently if you want the real kind of nasty stenchy sensation, you got to get it when it's in season. I didn't. I got a frozen one, so the taste yeah. was okay. Smell was it smelled fine, but I was still prepared for it to smell awful. You know, it was <laughs> yeah. actually cut and then tried it that we realized, hey, this isn't that bad. Um, so, uh, but in the future, you know, I am gonna do uh, I'm gonna do another durian episode when it's actually in season. Um, but so no, there's is if I can get my hands on it, you know, I'll 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 try it. I'll I'll do it. There there, you know, I certainly have a wish list, you know, of stuff that I want to get, but doubt I ever will. Stuff like uh, <laughs> Pepsi White or Tab Clear, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, now, have you watched the Santo movies, or at least even one? And if so, which one's your favorite? The Santo movies? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what those. I'm sorry. I'm not sure yeah. what those. Are. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, appa well, apparently these are Mexican films. I was just about to ask. Are these the Mexican wrestler movies? I think, <laughs> I think so because the person who asked it is a uh, fellow uh, Mexican film reviewer. So I'm wondering if you have seen Santo, which is like that. I don't know. Was Santo? And there was a Mexican wrestler that was in a Turkish movie that I watched. Uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was uh, the Turkish Captain America versus Turkish Spider Man. Devadam <laughs> 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 is what it's called. Um, uh, yeah, I don't. And I think there was a Mexican wrestler in that. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I just. I'm not sure. I just I'm not sure. <sighs> no, <laughs> just the random questions our loyal listeners give us. <laughs> we get a lot of them. <laughs> it was it was Santo and uh, Three Dev Adam. It was so I I yeah okay I, I have seen one. <laughs> hey, there we go. We've seen one at least. Hooray! Hooray! Yeah. <laughs> Since you reviewed the Superman musical, have you thought of doing any more cheesy TV musical specials for your show? If I can find any more, um, if I can find any more, I would. If, uh, um, oh, gosh, did they do any more cheesy musical type stuff like that back in the day? Uh, if I ever came across one, you know, I, I would certainly do it, especially since I did the uh, Superman one. But I haven't come across another one yet. Um, but oh, uh, there, I can let you know. <laughs> yeah. There's all. <laughs> That's my forte. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. He's a big music call freakazoid. <laughs> it's exactly this way to check it. Anything like the the Superman musical was kind of funny, but it was stupid. The Evil Dead yeah. musical's really good. It's, it can make. <laughs> Not almost anything, but a lot of things are musicals, and they're, they're pretty good in some aspect. Superman musical had, like, one or two fairly decent songs in it. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you seen the movie all the way through, the Superman musical? No. <laughs> I couldn't see it. There were, some por there were some portions of it I, I could manage, but then it just got... It's, no. <laughs> it, it's mostly unwatchable. It really is. It, it's it's definitely one of the worst movies I've had to sit through on the on the site. But you you are right in that at least there was one or two good decent songs. <laughs> yeah. Mixed in, with push. <laughs> mixed in with quite a few bad ones, but yeah. there was like like one song that was kind of all right. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. I remember the name of that one as well, but eh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, last time we chatted with you, we had an Ask That Character segment, and we asked questions to 80s Dan before he had his show. And, uh, yeah. And now you had a couple episodes of 80s Dan, which I absolutely love to death. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the question is, how did you come up with the idea to make that a sitcom-like review show? 
I wanted to do something original, at least, with it, because it was a character that I never intended on actually making a series out of. Um, you know, it was just supposed to be a one-off character, as it's a joke in the Caligula video, but it went over really well. And I thought, well, you know, eventually I'm going to want to create more characters anyway. I, I, I don't want the site to grow stale or anything. Um, like, I, I could turn this into a character, so I wanted to do something different. I didn't just want to have, like, oh, he's 80s Dan, and he's just in front of the camera reviewing whatever from the 80s. I mean, that wouldn't be – it would be just like any of the other shows I have, you know? So I wanted to, I wanted to do something over the top, something, you know uh, – what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Something uh, – Something bigger with it, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I decided to go the sitcom route, and I think that came from the fact that it's a cheesy character anyway. Yeah. So why not, why not make it like a sitcom? Why not throw all these other characters in there? Um, you know, I, I, I wanted to do a style of show that – of review show, at least um, – that uh, is more conversational, is more – gimmicky uh so that's that's really how i settled on the uh the uh, sitcom thing i thought it would be i thought it would be funny for it to be ensemble because i don't know how much the 80s dan character could carry a show all by himself mm-hmm. oh no i think he can <laughs> I, love <it. laughs> I love it i like it too i it's, it's a fun show too what movie have you watched that has made you so violently sick to the point of vomiting? Oh, um, oh man. I, let's see. The, the worst movie, the worst one that I've done was uh, Las Vegas Bloodbath. I was pretty pissed off while watching that. <laughs> what movie have I watched that, that, actually, that actually sort of started to make me sick? Um, and it was because I thought it was bad because it was gross, uh, was probably Sallow. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. This is, well, because I had seen Sallow long before I did a, a video on it. So I had, I had seen the movie before. I had seen the movie a couple of times before. And the first times that I saw it, oh, man, when it gets to the shit-eating part, oh, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty fucking foul. <laughs> it's, it, like, I was kind of sitting there like, ooh, even... And I'm getting a little queasy here, and I don't get queasy or nauseous or anything like that during movies. I really don't like, like crap. I in uh, Pink Flamingos, where uh, uh, where Divine actually consumes actual dog shit, I kind of laughed. I was like, well, that's just for I mean, that's just so over the top that that's funny. The mm-hmm. two groups, one cup. I watched that and was like, that that's just humorous. It's you know, it's I. It could be real, I don't know, but it's just so over the top that it's kind of humorous. Um, but the sallow thing, I don't know what it was. I I don't know what it was about that, but the feces eating in that was just kind of like, God damn, this is freaking gross. <laughs> so, uh, if, if, you, if you just see, uh, they just had the human centipede out, and I I watched Bales' review of it. I got edited too. Why? I... I... I like that movie. I actually really like that movie. If there actually exist people who have that kind of sick fetishes of, of sewing people's asses to their mouths. And this well, <laughs> the movie, it's, it's a bad scientist movie. I actually really like that movie. Um, I mean, it's flawed, yeah. The characters, are, the characters are a little too dumb in a lot of scenes. Um, they make just the, some of the worst decisions that that are so ridiculous that no one in their right mind would do a lot of the stuff that they do in this movie. But mm. <laughs> I think the movie's got a lot of positive things about it. One one of which is the villain Dieter Laser, um, who uh, who plays the mad scientist, who plays Doctor Heiter, um, and he's great. He's like one of the best <laughs> horror villains I've seen in a long time. He is. He, he, <laughs> He nails this freaking movie, and when you watch it, it, it he, he's you know he's the creator, he's a mad scientist. It, um, and, you know, it comes across more like that than it does that this is his sexual kink. Um, but uh, uh, and also, I it's it's interesting too how the movie is very much a suspense film. It, it's very much built around 
suspense than it is being insanely graphic, you know, because uh, really it's not that graphic of a movie. Um, so it's interesting how they sort of went that direction with it, and I, I kind of like the movie. I, I, I like it. I enjoy it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All righty then. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. <clears throat> Uh, what kind? Uh, what's your favorite kind of music? Do you have any favorite bands? Uh, my favorite kind of music is new wave, uh, new wave uh, disco. I like a lot of nineteen fifties stuff. Fifties. Uh, I like a lot of sixties rock that isn't. Although I I really like the British Invasion stuff like that, but I'm more of a fan of sixties style rock like uh, the Grassroots and you know bands like that, like the, like Beyond or like the Bo Brummels, stuff like that. I'm, I'm a big fan of that kind of stuff. Uh, so as far as a favorite band, I don't really have one. I don't really, you know, I, I, I used to say that I would have like a favorite band or something, but then like I would find something else and say, okay, this year, this is my favorite band, blah, blah, blah. So I, I just... I just don't really assign a, a favorite band anymore because I don't want to grow tired of it. <laughs> um, my favorite song is She Blind Me Science. She Blind Me Science is my favorite song. Oh, yeah. That just there we go. That that answers the next question. question. <laughs> 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 oh. yeah. She Blind Me with Science! <laughs> okay, I'll change the question a bit. What's your least favorite song? God. Um... No, and I, I remember when I was a when I was a music. Well, all right, I guess they really thought anything that's rap, uh, <laughs> rap, hunter year, whatever. Yeah, just pick one. I'll call it my, my least favorite. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, I was so uh, sure you were going to see Friday by Rebecca Black. Everybody seems to be doing uh, that. Actually, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't heard this song yet. I, I haven't heard it. It's in like. Well, those things like I'm like, oh, who the hell is this person? Why does this person keep fucking popping up everywhere? But I haven't actually heard the song. Don't. Um, you missed much. <laughs> oh, don't. Really? Don't. That bad? It's um, the song is bad, really, and the video is bad, really, so don't, don't even bother. It's it's just <laughs> kind of a a rich girl. Her parents paid for to be a pop star for a day, and just kind of milking on it. That, that's what it comes across as. It's it's, it's really bad. <laughs> Nice. It's like, it's like oh. a two note song, the Friday Prayers. Oh, it's dreadful. Oh, wow. I actually need to sit down and listen to this sometime. Um, it's, it's, she's had over a million hits on YouTube and she's been on what, yeah, all the it. Conan O'Brien and, and yeah, Jay Leno at something. Mm. Yeah. What's, going on with, what's going on with music today? Everybody's getting publicity over the stupidest stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's mainly the YouTube, you know. <laughs> Bastards! We need to come up with a new meme. meme. <laughs> uh. yeah. When I when I worked at a radio station, though, I used to I was a music director for it when I was when I was a DJ, and so I would go through there and I would take out songs that I didn't like. I worked at an station. I worked at an old station, so I'd be like, "Yeah, okay, Ode to Billy Joe's not getting played ever again. That's a terrible song." Uh, <laughs> Harper Valley PTA, nope. Um, <laughs> so you're just sitting with a hammer off beside you and no one can see it. Oh, oh whoops, I dropped it on the floor. Fucking smash it to bits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Die! No, it's lost. I don't know where it went. No, I found uh, somewhere. <laughs> it's gone. Um, like. What is the intro theme song for the 80s Dan show? It's uh, from a uh, show. It's it's kind of a trademark of mine to use themes from other television shows, you know. Um, so, uh, '80s dance theme comes from a short-lived series from I want to say 1984 uh, called The Hawaiian Heat, which was a cop show with Robert Ginty from the Exterminator movies. Is a cop show with with him. He, they're, they're like cops from. Uh, New York, I believe, and they move to Hawaii and are like they they become like like private investigators, I think, or something like that. It's been a while since I've seen it, but um, um, but I like I'm a big Robert Ginty fan, so I like the show. Uh, 
And I uh, thought, oh, I'll use that theme. <laughs> it works. Kapow! Yeah, it's it's, it's a, a brilliant pattern that you have with all the all the uh, theme tunes because they are they are all really catchy. I agree. Exactly, I'm, yeah. I'm not just saying this because Tongue Tied Ted's my favorite, but I, I yeah. just love the theme for that kick ass. Yeah, the uh, the master theme from uh... <laughs> yeah. that was a great show. That show was awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, that is all the general questions that we got for you. There was three, two of them. We got three of them. Hooray! <laughs> Spoilers! <laughs> uh, I guess this has been a Attack of the Awesome Interviews with the Brad Jones. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, no problem. The no problem. No problemo, as we say. Oh, uh, I am. Ho- I'm your host, Mike. <laughs> I'm your host, Mike, and along with me, which I did not say earlier, was Susie and Brandon. Yes, I was wondering when you were going to mention that. Yeah, now we won't know who we are. Welcome to the outtakes. Oh yeah. No. We're just too excited to have Brad on here again. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck us, listen, Brad. (laughs) I've always wanted to talk to the snob after uh, I didn't get to talk to the nostalgia critic. Yeah, it's (laughs) a lot of missed opportunities. Next. (laughs) Yeah, we're. I'm planning to follow up with Doug too, so that's coming out soon. Hooray! Cool, cool. <laughs> if only I'd like I... to do a, a collaborative interview with everybody on there. Oh yeah, it's like Benzai, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Bring a ding dong dong in a thong. So Brad, if you could just get everybody together in the one room and then call us, and then we'll just have a Attack of the Awesome speaks to that guy with the glasses. If you did that, Skype would probably crash to a blip. <laughs> <laughs> no, because if it's if it's it give you five seconds of the most awesome interview ever. <laughs> oh my god, this was the greatest interview I've ever had in my life. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, he said it was the greatest podcast I've ever seen in my life or heard. I mean, hey, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> I just this is a podcast. I thought I was just hearing voices in my head again. Oh, that's very relieving. Right. This is a podcast? I thought it was just two people talking in my ears. I thought it was your faces. Uh, uh, I, I'm just trying to think here. I We do have that ask that character thing, and I realize that you don't want to do it, and I guess I'm going to toss these pointless questions away and just forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a sneaky move there. That's a sneaky. I'll just throw them in the trash. Don't worry about them. You, you don't have to answer them. No, you don't have to. Don't you don't like the Karate Kid remake of Jackie Chan. That's all I ask. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear. No, actually, these, these mostly. No pressure from. No pressure, Brad, from Mike. It's all him. <laughs> it's all my fault. Sometimes I'm not very. Actually, <laughs> these are pretty general here. Like. uh well, did you ever see the Karate Kid remake with Jackie Chan? I saw enough of it. <laughs> I saw enough of it to know that, one, I don't give a crap if this kid gets his ass kicked. And two, it doesn't have Billy Zabka in it, so I'm not interested. <laughs> uh, actually, I should just go through these. Uh, back to the future of Ghostbusters. Oh, uh... Oh... Uh, I don't know if I choose. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I that's impossible. That's impossible. <laughs> it's like choos- choosing between your two children. I mean, <laughs> uh, okay. So that's undecided then. Okay. Uh, what do we? What is your favorite John Hughes movie other than The Breakfast Club? Uh, Sixteen Candles is my favorite John Hughes movie. Oh, that's so good. Oh, so hell yeah. Good. Love Molly Ringwald. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
John Hughes, you be remembered forever. So. I still see, my my favorite John Hughes movie is I still have to say I love Sixteen Candles and The Breakfast Club, but I love Ferris Bueller. Yes, Ferris oh yeah, it's the nice Ferris yeah. Bueller, I, I saw I, I watched the movie and I watched Spoon, Spoonie's uh, review of it, and it, he he kind of has a point with it, like. The, the Ferris Bueller character is an asshole, and he, and he and he got his friend in trouble when he wrecked the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he got he's away still, with it. He's still a likable character. I mean, you can have a character be a dick, be an asshole, be incredibly arrogant, but still be very likable, and that movie pulls that off. Yeah, oh, it does. It's so good. See, it's, see. It's, it's, it's it's a funny thing as well because. If it, Ferris is meant to be off sick. I usually watch that movie when I'm when I'm not feeling well as well. That's my perk me up movie. Uh, yeah. Nice and ironic there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. What was our another question on the list? Oh, from John Hughes movies to black exploitation. Uh, have uh-huh. you, Have you seen a uh, Black Dynamite? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I, don't know, I saw it. And I was like, well, that's really good. It, it looked like it was filmed in the seventies. Yeah, I like it. I like it when I like it when uh, movies do that, where they uh, they look like they legitimately could have been made back then. <laughs> and that's what you were trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I was trying to see if I think that is pretty much the general ones from the characters. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't even know how to end this. It's just awkward. <laughs> I thought we all just go and watch uh, Caligula. <laughs> Yay! I'll go and write, start writing the script for Caligula the musical, and I'll get back to you. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> oh, hell yes. <laughs> that would be awesome. I'll get right on that. Somebody Sorry, else went there. Sorry, just went there. Come <laughs> I just always go into that voice when I'm sitting watching it. I'll come down, I'll, I'll finish watching the, the review, and then I'll come and speak to my mom and be like, Hello there, mother. Is it time for dinner? That's awesome. <laughs> I just gotta get out of the voice. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, 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 Susie, is Pamela working? Because you're my backup, if mine didn't work. Yes, yeah, she, she's been working for an hour and a half. Okay, um, just double checking because I got mine recording, and I'm not sure if it's going to be good quality because mine turns out to be crap. <gasps> you suck! <laughs> yeah, I suck. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been working. I think she was just having a, a little PMS earlier. She's just being a bit of a bitch earlier, but she's okay now. Mm. She's calmed down. Okay, hey, that was weird. No. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> was <one. laughs> Okay. All right. Um, let's see how this interview goes because let's see how many people react to it. Is this good or this is bad? No, these guys are amateurs. These guys suck. <laughs> Why is any of it on this show? This guy, these guys suck. Yeah, look at the guy in the hood and the guy with the sunglasses. He thinks he's so cool. Yeah, the guy <laughs> thinks he's so cool and badass. He's not. He's such a lame old. But these are the people that don't attempt to do anything on the internet. They don't attempt to make videos or record songs or anything or do podcasts. So fuck them. Yeah. We love That's what, what I say. Fuck them. <laughs> we, we love what we do. You can't stop us. Exactly. Hard <sighs> time when I'm when I'm, thinking, I'm not, I've actually been hovering around YouTube entire time watching videos with the sound off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that kind of multitasker. <laughs> no, it, it just pisses me off, these people that come and put hundreds and hundreds of troll comments on uh, the pages and you look on their YouTube page or something and it's just like, they've done nothing. So how, well, how are yeah. they entitled to form an opinion right now when they've not done anything themselves? Well, basically, I mean, you have to look at it as whether or not it's constructive or not. If it's constructive, you know, that it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I try to constructively criticize stuff all the time. You know, uh, you just basically got to pay attention to what the difference is between 
criticism that's meant to be, you know, important, meant to be helpful in a way and constructive versus stuff that's like, you know, fags or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did anybody see Helsing 920's reaction to kick ass you? Oh, boy. He was mad. No, no. He- no, he was no. mad. He, he he was he was literally saying the f word every five seconds. He was that mad. Really? Boy, I didn't see it. Has he seen Kickassia? Yeah, he, he said he hated it. He hated the acting. He hated the camera work. He said, and Doug, Doug Walker is the guy who ra- who uh, rants on people who are bad acting. Doug Walker, fuck you. Jesus. Oh God. I, okay. It was like he was about ready to kill somebody. I'm like Jesus. <laughs> I, it's, it's, I don't know. But, I mean, if, you know, if he doesn't like it, that's fine. Yeah, uh, everybody's got their you know, opinion. Uh, yeah, not everyone's going to like it. I, I personally watched it 20 <laughs> times when it came out. <laughs> personally, uh, I, I, I was excited when Kiki Assia came out. I liked it the first time I saw it all. I don't really like it all that much anymore. I, I just think it's, it's kind of... It, it, it doesn't really hold up to, like, sort, sort of like the... Uh, the uh, Oh, what was it? The brawl they had the first anniversary. That was that that was that looked like everyone was having fun with that. Yeah, uh, I love Kickassia. I like Kickassia. I was in it. <laughs> <laughs> you goddamn right you were. <laughs> that was. That... I, I'm actually, I'm taking the DVD away with me. I'm going on on vacation on Friday, and uh-huh. I probably won't have internet access all that much when I'm away so I won't be able to click onto the site when I'm away so I've actually downloaded some of the episodes onto my computer and I'm taking Kigazio with me nice. <laughs> so I've got some connection <laughs> so, no I must have that guy with the glasses <laughs> you crazy no, I, I got this new this phone I've had for uh, a few months called the Droid Incredible ever heard of it the Droid no. you can get internet you, you can uh, take pictures with it and also you can get Skype on it wow yeah, so I'm guessing if I if I went if I logged into Skype here, and uh, I would actually um, I would actually talk to people via Skype from my cell phone. Mm-hmm. The only problem is I I have no idea how to how to um you can't really log off of it while it's still on. So yeah, you have sure. to shut the phone off, then turn it back on, wait like thirty seconds for it to load everything. And <laughs> I like this phone, but it, it's it's very complicated and. Also, when you watch YouTube videos on it, it crashes a lot, so uh, that's a pain. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, I heard, Brad, you got a new cell phone. Because that Doug... got a new cell phone? Doug, Doug told me that you actually got a cell phone, that you... Because you were, like, the first person that ever got a cell phone or something like that. I was like, really? I was the first person to get a cell phone? Or, or someone. But I was one of the last... <laughs> last, last <laughs> <person. laughs> <laughs> Blooper. <laughs> yeah, the only reason why I got a cell phone is because my wife got a new one, and I just got her old one. <laughs> yeah, I just remember Doug saying, oh, Brad finally got a cell phone. Yeah, yeah. It took me, yeah, it took me a while to get a, to get a cell phone. I think Doug's got a droid as well. Have you seen any of his recent videos where he has his phone out with him? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's looks, got a nicer, he's looks, got a nicer like, phone than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I just have hundreds of dog pictures on my phone just because when I'm out with the dogs if they do something funny I'm just like ooh gotta get it on camera so it's, just, it's just hundreds and, it's hundreds of photos of dogs people must think I'm very strange <laughs> it's like, uh-huh. why have you got dogs on your phone <laughs> mm, could it be on the dog walker gee no when I, when I take pictures I, I have this feature where it automatically goes to my photo bucket like I, I got pictures I got pictures of me with Colin Mockery and Brad Sherwood, and uh, some pictures of my neighbor's dog, pictures, <laughs> pictures of my robot, and when I was at Motorama. Sure. Um, pictures with uh, Penn and Teller, C.J. Ramon, a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah. It's all cool. There you go. <laughs> huh. Just random. The, yeah, you got a picture of Penn and Teller. Yeah. It was okay. I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I met Colin. Mockery and Brad Sherwood. What? What? Wait, wait what? a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I met them. I, I saw them at an imp- at a improv show earlier in the month, and they were hilarious. Nice. 
And I, I hear uh, Drew Carey's come out with a new improv show, um, I think, next month. It's going to be on Game Show Network. A lot, a lot of people from Whose Lines Anyway is going to be on it. Oh, that's so okay. cool. you, you get all the best stuff over there. I don't, you don't get any of that. <laughs> well, you, I, you, I remember you, uh, Whose Lines in Anyway originated in the UK. Yeah. No, 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 the, the, the game, show cha- game Zone Game Show Channel. I don't get that over here. Oh, I love uh-huh. Whose Lines it Anyway. I love it. That's not fair. I absolutely love uh-huh. it. No, I, because we get shit over here. <laughs> Come on, Susie, just move That's to America. Yeah. I, I'm still trying to be able to watch the Tonys over here, because I've, I've, I've never seen the, the, the Tonys. But you cannot get it in the UK. Yeah. It sucks. Tony, 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 Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I love the producers. Yeah, I love it too. too. The, I, I saw, I've seen both versions. The original one with... Uh, Gene Walder and the newer one with Nathan Lane, yeah. Matthew Broderick. I, I I like the new I like the newer one. I, I should be real. Yeah. Could, could you imagine if I decided to do an old versus new of the producers? That that was really good. That I was I was I'm dying for Doug to do that. I just love both of them, but I cannot decide which one's better because I love Gene Wilder. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love that man to death. Um, but at the same time, I love Nathan Lane and Matthew yeah. Broderick. Kind of won me over in the musical. Yeah. Happy, keep it snappy, keep it gay. <laughs> That's so freaking cool. Uh, I knew Miss Thurman, who the fuck knew she could sing? <laughs> Hi, do you? It's, it's, it's just like, and I'll, I'll say this now, you probably, it, it, Chris has already made fun of me for it, but I'm the biggest gleek there is, and oh. just seeing Gwyneth Paltrow on Glee, it, was just, it just made my days like, oh my god, someone who was actually fantastic at singing on here. <laughs> we have officially reached the outtakes of this interview and this is where we get to know each other a little more for some odd reason I don't know why <laughs> cause it's fun exactly extra, extra <laughs> juicy stuff for the listeners to listen on See, because this time we're more comfortable with Brad, but last time I was just sitting there going, oh my god, 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 it's Brad Jones, it's Brad Jones, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Now I was just like, hey. You <laughs> cannot describe how much I was a nervous wreck going into this. Like, same thing with all the other interviews, like Mars Girl and Link Car. I'm like, oh boy. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm actually, what am I going to say? <laughs> if, if, if you heard the interview me and Mike did with Doug, you can probably tell why it does, hasn't got that many views on it, because they're sitting there going, that's awesome, that's great, that's <laughs> yeah. yeah. great, because I don't want to see anything stripping like, holy shit, it's Doug Walker. <laughs> yeah. it, all goes, it all goes with experience, pretty much. Yeah, because like, so yeah. Doug was our first interview, and it, it was just an experience we're learning from, and plus my microphone was pretty much crap on that interview, too, so... <laughs> it, like, it, all, it was a good interview, but the, your microphone was really crappy. Uh-huh. And the internet connection. And it's, it's, it's because we're, well, because this is the second time we're talking to you, Brad, and we, we've spoken to you before, and now we're, we, we know we're not going to sound like idiots if we, if we say what we think. You um, are brilliant. I just love it. Sounds fine to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking through a rock band microphone because I don't have an actual one. See? I heard me saying that last time you, st- you still got yeah, that one. <laughs> I think you did say that too. Yeah, he's like, oh, you got a rock band mic? Rock on! <laughs> <laughs> I remember the, Mar- the Mars Girl interview. I was I, I was talking with the microphone built into my laptop and I sounded so into the background you could almost not hear me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was... Yeah, <laughs> Attention, was it Mike? <laughs> no. Mike, can't you hear me? <laughs> I can't you hear me? <laughs> yeah, he was, yeah. No, he wasn't turning down the volume on purpose. No, the, oh, oh, what? What, Brandon? Yeah. No, no. Really? I can't screw you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, my mama's home. <laughs> You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go. Nothing for you.